Welcome to today's video. My name is Christine and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk all about sinking funds. What are they? What are you gonna do with them? How do they benefit you, your budget, your finances? How does it impact your money? So if you like videos all about money, and they're some of my favorites, please give this video a thumbs up to help out the channel. It truly does help other people find my videos. If you have people in your life that are interested in personal finance and how to do better with their budget, they might enjoy a channel like this. So what are sinking funds? They're a little bit different than long-term savings. Let me explain it really quick. Sinking funds are you save up every month an amount to equal a, an annual purchase, we'll use Christmas as an example because people typically spend a lot on Christmas. It comes every year, it's always in December, it's not a surprise. And if you wanna spend $600 on Christmas, every single month you should set aside $50 a month. Just put it in your budget. It's $50 a month, you're gonna set it to the side, and by the time Christmas comes, you'll have your $600 to spend on Christmas. When your big event or expense comes about, you have the money and you don't have to fall back on a credit card or panic about this large expense that just jumped up. But other items that could be sinking funds include home maintenance, car expenses, insurance. A lot of the time, car and home insurances are paid every six months or every year property taxes. Uh, my mortgage is not done with an escrow account, so I take care of my own property taxes, so I do have to pay those every year, and that's several thousand dollars. And if I don't set aside a couple hundred every single month, when the bill comes due, you would have this moment of like, ah! So putting these items in your budget guarantees that you're not surprised when it comes time to pay for these things. In contrast, long-term savings is going to be something that you save up and purchase, but that you're not gonna purchase again. So for example, this year, Dave and I are looking to replace our mattress. Our current mattress is 12 years old. You're supposed to replace them every 10 years, so we're a little over. So we're gonna save up the money for a couple of months, go and buy the mattress, and then we're done. This is not something that we have to save for every single month for the rest of our life, like a sinking fund would be. So you see the difference between a sinking fund and then a long-term savings. Let me jump to the spreadsheets, I'm gonna show you my extremely simple spreadsheet that I like to use. Here we are on the spreadsheet. I just titled it Sinking Funds and it's a very simple spreadsheet to look at and to use. I have mine set up monthly here on top. Of course, if you wanna create your own or do it differently than this, you can absolutely do that. I have a beginning balance column here just in case you did start with some amount of money. So we have a beginning a beginning balance. So one of my examples was Christmas, which I have here. And let's say I didn't spend all of my Christmas money. I have $20 remaining. So we will start the year with $20. And maybe you wanna spend $300 on Christmas, which if I'm doing my math right, is $25 a month. So we're gonna put $25 a month into our budget every single month as a bill for the entire year and come December, we'll have our 300 plus the $20 that we saved at the beginning, right here. Now, let's say we want to purchase something that's on sale for Christmas in August. So I come down to the withdrawal line here and I'm gonna put this in parentheses, which makes it a negative. So let's say I spent $40 on a present in August and now it reflected my ending balance right here is now 280. So I know how much I have saved, I know how much I have to spend on Christmas. And if this is too low for you, you can say, hey, my budget is a little off. I need to go back and raise it to $75 a month. That's a better Christmas for me. So we'll do that, take it all the way across. And now we are going to have $900 for Christmas. So depending on your family size, if you do extended family gifts, um, all of this can be very, very helpful to figure out how much you need to save every month. So let's come down to property taxes. My property taxes are over $3,000 a year. What would happen if I saved to 75 a month for property taxes? All the way across, that gives me 3,300 at the end of the year. That is going to work. And I do pay my property taxes twice throughout the year. It's cut in half, once in December and once in June. So let's say in June, I come over and I pay, oops, I pay the 3,000. Oops, I pay the 1500 in June and it is reflected accurately and then one more payment in December. And as you can see, I've oversaved by $300, which is great, I'd rather oversave than undersave, but now I can adjust this amount 
down a little bit so it reflects on my monthly budget more accurately. Home maintenance is an interesting one because if you own a home, you are in charge of everything. If something breaks, you have to fix it or hire someone else to fix it. Recommendations range from one to 2% of your home's value every month as far as savings. Maybe that feels a little steep to you. Maybe you wanna do $100 a month. There's been years where we haven't had to do basically anything on home maintenance. And then there's other years where my dishwasher catches fire and there's a hailstorm that ruins my roof and I had to get a new roof. One of my hot water heaters busted. Apparently they don't last longer than 20 years. Who knew? And we had to get a new one of those. So there's always something that's going to come. The trick is to be prepared for when it comes. And when it comes to home maintenance, I don't know that I would ever consider myself to have too much money in my home maintenance fund because a toilet overflow that destroys your basement and drywall and carpet and having to replace all of those things at one time, these are actual things that have happened to me or my neighbors. We're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. Replacing an HVAC system, all of these things are expensive. Maybe if I had 10 or $15,000 in my home maintenance fund, I might feel comfortable stopping savings at that point, but it's gonna be a pretty high amount. And same thing with car repairs. It's recommended to save $75 a month per car on car repairs. So let's go ahead, I have two cars. So we'll put in 150 a month on car repairs. What kind of thing does this include? Um, I would say new tires. This is always something that you're gonna have to do. And I don't have expensive cars, like my tires aren't expensive. So if I caught new tires with a RAV, even the cheap tires would probably be $400, three, three or 400. So let's say I needed to spend 300 on tires. And this could be oil changes. Um, we have some pretty cheap oil changes in my town, but sometimes they can be a lot. You need new wiper blades. You need a new air filter. If you have a car with a little bit more miles, we will need to replace some belts and a fan and maybe the bushings and the brakes. And all of these are very standard car repairs on a car that's not brand new. And I buy all of my cars used and they're fairly high mile, but because I save so much money on the purchase of the car and on insurance, because it's not an expensive new car, um, paying $300 a year for some repairs is not a big deal. I would probably cap the car repair fund at about $5,000 because if they're coming back to me with a $5,000 repair, guess what? We're selling the car, we're getting a new one. <laughs> And something I like to add in here is back to school because my kids have fees, they grow every year, they probably need new shoes, and I have four of them. So I find that the back to school time as they get older into high school are much more expensive than they used to be. So I personally like to have $1,000 in savings for back to school time. This is probably gonna go up as my boys get older and they're gonna want to get more expensive shoes. I do, I have an 11 year old and a nine year old son and their clothing and shoes are still on the cheap side, but Haley and Andrews are really getting expensive as they move into adult clothing. So if I take the thousand ish dollars that I want, you know, maybe I save $90 a month for the entire year. I've got about a thousand for back to school. Now what's interesting about this budget form is down here at the bottom, I have given a total for the month that I need to save for all of these sinking funds. As you can see there, I have $690 a month set aside for all of these sinking funds. And if that does not fit in your budget, it's time to rework your budget and maybe reconsider the things that you have. If you can't set aside money for your home maintenance, we need to cut expenses somewhere else so you can do that. It only takes one emergency when you're a homeowner to rock your world financially. And you do not wanna put this stuff on a credit card because we don't wanna go into debt for something we know is going to happen at some point. If you can't save $690 a month, as this is just an example, then maybe we're saving too much for Christmas. Maybe we need to consider doing a couple of smaller years for Christmas. Perhaps 275 is too much for property taxes. Well, in that case, if you can't afford the expenses that come along with your house, maybe you bought too much house and we need to cut the variable expenses somewhere else. In fact, I did a whole video on how to cut your grocery bill, a ton of ways to do grocery shopping hacks on my other channel. In fact, I'll leave that video down below. It's a lot of really great information. If you can't tell, I like sinking funds. I like budget sheets and I like playing with numbers and making sure everything is going to work. It also helps me 
make a list of priorities when it comes to my income, like my income comes in, these are the priority things I need to do, and then I can add in entertainment, going out to eat, allowance money for the adults. Uh, there's a, call that a bunch of different things, like spending cash, I've heard uh, blow money, although that's not my favorite term. <laughs> money that I could have or Dave could have that we could just go spend on whatever and you don't have to tell the other person or explain away your expenditure. I think it's a really good thing to have in a marriage and I don't like calling it allowance either, but it's just your like allotted, let's say it's $20 or let's say it's $100, whatever it is. You know, Dave could go spend his $100 at the gas station buying beef jerky and soda and it's whatever, like that's what was allotted for him to do whatever he wanted. And let's say I wanted to save mine for four months and purchase a larger, more expensive purchase, like a smartwatch for triathlon training or running or whatever it is, then that's my prerogative as well. So if you are interested in this very, very simple sinking funds spreadsheet that I have, I'll have a link down below for you to sign up. Tell me that you want it. And then I'm going to email you the spreadsheet after the fact. I appreciate you hanging out with me today. As we talk about money, if you want to see any other topics or details about budgeting, let me know what those are down below so I can plan future videos on things you are interested in. Thanks so much. And I'll see you in the next video.